This is Mr. Esteban León. How do you know? He is a uh, third generation uh, Mexicano. Right. Uh, Chinese. Uh, how are you? Mexicano from Ensenada. Originally. And uh, his parents were, they came from Chile? Uh, from Quantum. Uh, they came in, uh, well, we are the third generation here in Mexico. My, par my parents were born, my mother was born in here and in China, and my father was born in Mexico. Both my grandparents are from uh, China, so uh, we're actually Mexican uh, Chinese. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and this is his lovely wife. I'm um, his wife, um, as well as my husband. Uh, my grandparents were from China, but as for my mother's side, my mother was uh, half Mexican, half Chinese. So, but my mom was able, had was fortunate to go to China and. Stayed there for 14 years, so she was able to learn about the culture. Um, I was uh, born and raised here, as well as my husband, and um, we're very glad for all of you to come here and yeah. join us and learn about our culture and about uh, Mexicali. My father's side, he came from a little village, 
And in that little village, there were, say, three, fa three families from three different uh, last names. So when, they, when my father got here, they established that little association from that little village. Others are from last names. Like her association, it's, it's uh, father. So it's their association is with last name, like say the Jones. And then they created their association. And that's how they became a lot of, uh, of different ones. And they have the same customs. Even though they all came from the southern part of China, Sometimes there are things that we eat differently, and um, that's how you know we distinguish each from. And the, the dialects are a little different. The dialects. So, most everyone's from South China. All of them. All, all of them. Uh, very, very. We have about five people only that are from other states, other provinces that they call. But, um, once okay. one family comes, the other one is here. Yes, that is that is correct. Like uh, her father-in-law came here first, then he brought his wife and his uh, his son, and then the son went and married her, and she came here, and now she has her little, her little boy here, and so that's why. And we're all from the um, southern part, specifically from Toisan, uh, from a little. Um, you would say a little suburb of uh, Guangdong. So that's why we all are from around the city. We hardly get any people from the north. See any that they're like farming and all that? Because precisely that area is uh, farming. It's a farmland. So I think they, they have English. They have English too. From the south of China, it's very tropical. It's uh, 40 degrees with 100% humidity. I've been there in July, and believe me, I, 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 I said I'm never coming back. But one of the things that attracted me going to, to the southern part of China in the summer, I, I love this specific uh, fruit called uh, Lei Ji. It's, uh, I don't know if you ever tasted it, they do sell it in San Diego in the market. It's, it's a white fruit, it's, uh, it's very juicy, and it's nothing compared, that one does nothing compared to the one that it's in here in San Diego. It's definitely the one better than the one in, in, in China. That's the only thing, but the weather is horrible. You know? But right here we have the opposite. It's extremely, extremely dry. So when they get here, most of them suffer from very dry lips. And uh, it's like going into an oven here. Uh, it's, it's very, very dry. You dry like a prune uh, in here. But uh, when they get here, they eventually they, they, they're very um, resilient, I would say. Yes, yes. Uh, because most of them, when they come here, especially men, they go into the kitchens. None of them are cooks in China. They come here and they learn. So it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard for them being in the, the kitchens here in Mexicali do not have AC. And I don't know if you've seen the Chinese uh, uh, skillets, the walks. They're huge with the flame. They're, it's horrible. It's, if it's outside, it's 40. Inside, it's 50. I've seen, uh, I've seen them working in, in the kitchens. And it's, it's, but they adjust. They adjust. Yes. So something I'm sure you've, you've heard, of, and maybe some people here have as well, but a lot of uh, I think Mexicans and Americans as well have heard urban stories, urban folklore, urban legends of tunnels. Yes, under oh, that's one of the things that I would like to talk about. Um, most of the Chinese associations that you see have in underground uh, living spaces. They're not tunnels, they're actually living spaces, just like this one, except that it's all dark. Uh, my father used to tell me, I've been into a lot of them, and they use them as storage now, but before, um, they did not have ACs, and they were very, very expensive, and uh, the most you could do was just those, uh, 
you know, those fans. That's, and then later, when I was very young, we had those, what we, we used to call water coolers. You know, the ones that fans, but they have like a hose with water. And because it was very dry, it was very, it was good. You put in, I uh, think, and I used to see that they had like some kind of dry grass or something, some kind of filter. Okay. So it, it would wet, get it wet, and then the fan would would blow like cool air. And mist. And it, yeah, and mist sometimes. Yes. The A is A, the O is O, the E is A, E. So that's how we learn. They have uh, vowels and they have consonants, just like the Roman alphabet. And the word that I was telling you, red, is this person. And that's you write it, you type it in the in the keyboard, and then you have to recognize. You have to recognize the character. And then you, you click on this one, and then you start making your sentence. And then, um, uh, uh, thinking. Thinking, yes, yeah, thinking. Okay, another thing. In English, to learn the days of the week, it's very hard for Chinese to learn in um, Western language because you have to learn Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Chinese, in one minute I can teach you how to, how to say the seven days of the week. Okay, Xin Qi means week. Yi means one, R means two, Sa means three, Si means four, Fa means, uh, Wu means five, okay? So in Mondays, Xin Qi Yi, it's Monday. You just learn from one to, from one to six, and you know how to say from one, from Monday to Saturday. Week one, it's Monday, Xin Qi Yi, Sing Chi R Tuesday. Sing Chi San Wednesday. Sing Chi Si Thursday. Sing Chi Wu Friday. What happened to Sunday? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then also uh 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 sing kill come on, sing. The Sunday is the only one that changes. Okay, Sunday. Okay, Sing Chi, this is number six, which is Saturday. This is Sunday. Tian means day. So week day means. This is not number seven. It's just called day. This is uh, the the character for day. Oh, oh, this one also. Which is equivalent to to day. Okay, this picture was drawn by, uh, we have a logo, one of the uh, 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 logo here who's an artist. Um, he drew this picture when uh, Mexicali uh, commemorated its 100 years. And um, here it talks, um, it talks about, right here are the, the names of the Chinese associations in here. And right here, it talks about the hardships of labor and being away from their homeland that they had to endure when they go to the foreign country. A lot of them never went back. A lot of them never went back. Do you happen to know when the first Chinese started migrating to Mexico? Yes, I'll, I'll talk about it okay. here. I would okay. like to uh, come here and sit in here and I will talk about, about, about the history of Mexicali, the, Ch the Chinese who were the pioneers here in Mexicali. 
But in Chinese, it's very, very interesting because, okay, do you see, see something in common? In, there, these are names of my sons. Do you see something in common? First first. Uh, uh -huh. The first character, they're all the same. Okay, this means to learn. Okay, these names, it's, uh, it's like, I, I, I have uh, an older brother. And I, my father, my father has two brothers. And the sons of these two brothers will have the same first name. That will identify them that they're very close. But if my father has a sister, her kids are not allowed to have that name, the same name as her brother. Only the ones with the same, with her, my, my father's, which is uh, uh, Ham. It's very, very important that they continue their blood lineage. So right here, this means to learn, this means learn. And this king means like construct. We wanted him to be something that he will build in life. So there are meanings. It's not names like Joe or, or John or, or Sylvia or Martha, no. So then right here, the second one. The second one means uh, light, bright. We, we want him to be bright and intelligent when he, he grows up. And the other one, we just I just used uh, I don't know, Nicole Nicole Hockey. Okay. This is uh this is the one construct this to build this one. And this is the one uh mm -hmm. it's the, this is bright. And this is Wa. I just used like to wa the, the name. But we have means. So, so right here they know that these are 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 brothers, direct brothers. And that name is from their father. Okay, this one. He's, uh, if his father was the oldest in the family, he gets to choose this character. Like say my husband, he has a brother. His, his brother's kids have to follow what my husband chose, the name that my husband chose. He can choose the second one, right. but the first one is chosen by the eldest. Okay. So he gets priority over that. So it's quite interesting, so in Chinese, you don't call aunt. In English, we call, oh, she's my aunt Margaret, she's my aunt Lydia, she's my aunt Sylvia. No. In Chinese, it's very, very uh, specific. They go by ranking. Second aunt on father's side. On father's side, it's called Wu. On mother's side, it's called Ai. So if I say, uh, anybody remembers a number in Chinese? Yi. Yi, yi means one, but you don't say yi, you always say ta, which is big. You never say number one, you say my, oh, my big aunt, which is the old eldest. But the second is r, r means number two. So she's my r, i, my r, gu. So when I said, oh, she's my r, gu, ah, ah, I know that she's the second aunt on the father's side. It's very, very specific, and that is because we need to give respect to the, our elders. It's absolutely important. It's evident that you have to have respect. Even if I was a, I was a twin, I have a twin sister, and she's five minutes older than I am, I could never call her by her name. I have to call her Jie Jie, which is older sister. She can call me by my name. But with, with uh, loving care, she will call me Mei Mei. Mei Mei means little sister. So it's very, very tightly important. It's, you know, regardless, uh, our elders always have, you know, either they're right or wrong, they're always right. So we can never, never disrespect our elders. So, you know, that's why we have to have, it's very, very important. So everyone has their specific names. So a uh, person by the name of Guillermo Andrade, he purchased a big piece of land here in, in Mexicali. And um, at that time, there were only about population 255. Half of them were just uh, uh, native Indians here. 
and didn't amount to much. It was very, very, very dry arid land. But then by the, uh, when he purchased this land, he sold it to a company called Colorado River, Com uh, River Company. These Colorado River Company was, the owners were, had stocks from uh, New York Times and the Pacific Railroad Company. And they uh, bought this land from Guillermo Andrade. And they said, okay, well this land is uh, ideal for cotton. At that time, cotton was very, very big. It was a very big industry. And this land was, was ideal to plant cotton. So, but he, uh, Colorado River Company did not uh, go into the production. At that time, the Pacific Railroad uh, construction was ended. So they had a lot of, there were a lot of Chinese uh, that had man labor and they said, you know, go down to Mexicali. They came down here. The 80% that were a lot of Chinese, Japanese, and um, uh, India, from India, Indians. They came here, but 80% were Chinese, was Chinese labor. When they came here, there were certain uh, conditions. Colorado River Company did not want to get into the production or the uh, planting of uh, cotton. So there were one of the things that they said was, uh, okay, we'll, we'll loan the, uh, we'll let you work the land. 50% of what you, the production, whatever you make out of it, 50% it goes towards rent. The other 50% it's to uh, purchase seeds, and fertilizers, whatever you, you need, and 25% it's for you. That's what he told the, the Chinese laborers. So then they, most of them, they were very, very hard workers, and that was their, their deal. They were not allowed to purchase land. They could only work. So then they brought other, their other uh, uh, family here to work. By that time, when the cotton industry was at its fully full height, they should they estimate that there were about five thousand Chinese in here, mostly Chinese. Eighty percent of more were were Chinese workers here living here. I used to hear my father say that at that time they would have uh, Chinese fruits and vegetables and everything. They were able to to plant whatever they, you know, everything was Chinese in here, so they they, they did a lot of it, mostly in the, the cotton industry, but then they also had these Chinese associations and and markets and all, and, and all that. So then, but then later, I don't know if you've heard about, um, they started getting a lot in Sinaloa, which is the next, our neighbor uh, state. I don't know if you heard that there was an anti-Chinese, did you hear about that? There was um, a lot of the Chinese had a lot of businesses in there. My father used to tell me that um, a lot of the Mexican people started complaining that Chinese were owning too much land. But here in Mexicali, the Chinese were not, not owners of the land. It was by the Colorado River Company. So then at that time in the, uh, when there was an anti-Chinese in Sinaloa, in, specifically in Sinaloa in the province, the government took over the land. The government took over the land, but my father said that it never came here. But after that, the Colorado River Company had to leave because the government, the people complained that foreigners were taking over the land. So right now, I think it's still, uh, foreigners are not allowed to own land here in Mexico. A lot of them, if they do have, it's they use um, Mexican citizen as a name, and then that's how they own land. So mostly that's, um, it was cotton. They didn't, they picked the cotton, and but they had to pay. And it was only 25% that they had for themselves. So that's how they started, a lot of them start coming. After the government took over the, the lands in Sinaloa, then a lot of these Chinese that were here, they had to go into different areas, which is restaurant and um, a dry cleaning. And that's mostly, mostly Chinese restaurants in here. 
So here in Mexicali, the Chinese food is very, very famous throughout Mexico because it's made to the Mexican taste. Later, when you eat Chinese food in here, a lot of the people here, they say, you know, this, this might not be very authentic because it's made to the Mexican palates. <laughs> so we, they have uh, peppers, which we don't eat hot, spicy. But you'll notice that it's a little different. But people here in Mexicali are very, very used to, to Mexican food, or Chinese food. Yep. And typically, every Sunday, Mexican families, they go to Chinese restaurants. We have uh, quite a bit of uh, restaurants, uh, a lot of Chinese restaurants here. And they're open seven days a week. And they're open for 10, 12 hours. So um, that's how most of the Chinese started in here and they'll start building little associations around here. And most of them are here in, in the downtown Mexicali. Where she's just came recently as her, you know, just in the last 10 years, Mexican government has opened its doors to, to foreigners, especially to Chinese. And they're now they're, they can legally come here and get working permits. And then after five years, they can they can legally uh, immigrate and get their Mexican passports. Five ten years, of course. Like she took a test. Not very many can take a test because not very many. Most of them, they they are not able to learn uh, Spanish because they work very long hours. They work ten hour shifts, and they work uh, they work six days a, a week. So they don't get to learn the language. Whereas she, she was able to go to school and learn the language. And she was able to take the test. She has to take the test like a civics test to uh, become a Mexican citizen. So um, that's how most of the Chinese now are. But before, it was not legal to have uh, most. When my father came here, he came with, he bought uh, somebody else's papers to get in here. La later, he legalized it, his papers and became a citizen. So a lot of the Chinese here, or a lot, half of them don't speak that much Spanish? I could say like 60% very broken Spanish. Very, very broken Spanish. So think of the irony of Chinese immigrants illegally immigrated to Mexico or Mexicans are illegally immigrated to the United States. Yes. But right, the Chinese that are here now, they're legal. Because uh, mm -hmm. Mexico has has changed its, has changed its laws uh -huh. and they're able to come here legally. Mm -hmm. They all have legal status here. And their kids are able to go to schools. Attend schools. And